A six-year-old boy in California had the idea to spark a little happiness in people, and his parents got to work on making that happen. Kay Reedy reports now on the simple idea to bring joy to the world. You get to write a note, and uh, then you get to put it in here. Then we get the keys, put it in, unlock it, and take it out, and uh, then the wish comes true. This kind of unbridled passion can only come from one of the most visionary and youngest philanthropists we've ever met. It's called the Joy Box. This is six-year-old Levi Navarro, who believes that finding happiness is as easy as visiting this box. So much negativity and divisiveness in our world, and then this kid comes along and is like, Let's spread some joy. The boy's parents, Dan and Amy, say the whole idea started last summer when Levi said he wants to spread joy. So we decided to take all the people to Disneyland. Quickly, Levi realized a road trip with the entire city of Turlock may not work out. Poof, it, did, it didn't happen. Then another thought. Pancake party, that was fun. So we came up with this idea. Months later, after a trip to Home Depot, a bit of elbow grease and careful placement in front of the Navarra home, came this box of joy. So if you have a wish, you can just put one in here. The Navarras say so far they found some donations and wishes as small as toys and as big as a house. But we're hoping that as momentum and time builds up that we can do as much as that we possibly can. As the happiness continues to stuff the box, Levi's parents are in awe of what this young man continues to teach. It's amazing uh, when you have kids what they actually end up teaching you. And I always tell people, I want to be like Levi when I grow up. That generosity and kindness and joy would be like markers of my kid. And um, I think that would make him a really, really fantastic addition to humanity. That's amazing. Well, the news at noon starts right now. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News at Noon. Happening now at noon, the search for a shooter after a record driver is shot and crashes into a ditch. Plus, caught on camera, a violent robbery. Now police need your help finding the men responsible. Tumbling temperatures. A live look outside this afternoon at a gray and damp and just kind of a dreary Wednesday. Yeah, it really right? is, yeah. And you know what? Those temperatures are still falling this afternoon. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Andy Sirota. And I'm Christine Noel. So we're talking about a good 30 degree temperature drop in like 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Turning to meteorologist Justin Stapleton on this weather person's oh, yeah. day. That's right. You're delivering some cold temperatures on this day. Cold thinking <laughs> about it. We just want to make sure you all were paying attention. We're paying attention. Right? Yeah, like, right there. Hey, it's weather person's day. <laughs> Wham! 30 degrees. There you go. Yeah, it's really tumbling outside. It has been crashing throughout most of the morning. We've seen down on the island where they were at about 70 degrees. They're now in the 50s, 51 in Galveston is 54 when we started the 11 o'clock hour show here. 41 in Katy. Woohoo! They're rising to 41. 45 at Bush and 46 at Hobby. So as you might have guessed, it is going to be a brisk afternoon out there. We've got a little bit of visibility issues as well. Uh, right down in Galveston, we've got about a mile and a half visibility. You can see a little bit of patchy fog out there too. And it's mainly just some low clouds. So just give yourself a little bit of extra time if you headed out. Thankfully, there's not a whole lot in the terms of any kind of showers and thunderstorms. We've got some real heavy thunderstorms moving over and towards Louisiana, north of Lufkin. But for us here locally, it's fairly quiet. Can't say the same as you get back off to the west. The snow continues to pound much of west Texas where they've got winter storm warnings and still looking at upwards of maybe close to four to six inches of snow. All of that pink shading there from Oklahoma City on down towards El Paso is winter storm warnings. Right now, though, those temperatures that are holding in the low to mid 40s, notice as we get into this afternoon, they're not going to budge much. May get up to 50 in some spots, but it is going to be a brisk afternoon, followed by a very cold night. And yes, there's still a slight chance we could see a little bit of sleep maybe mixing in as well. I'll show you where we may pinpoint that early tomorrow morning, along with the rest of your work week forecast here coming up in just a bit. Andy? All right, Justin, thanks so much. We are following breaking news right now from Turkey. A plane overshot the runway at the airport in Istanbul. The impact tore the jet into three pieces. Crews are now on that scene pulling people from the wreckage. So far, the country's transportation minister says it doesn't appear that anyone died. 
We are also following breaking news regarding David Temple. A judge has denied a third trial for Temple in motion for a change of venue for sentencing. In August, a Harris County jury convicted Temple of murder in the 1999 death of his pregnant wife, Belinda. But the jury could not agree on a sentence, so a new jury is supposed to be called to decide on a punishment. Temple was originally convicted of murder in 2007 and served nine years in prison before a judge tossed out his conviction. New developments in the crash that killed an El Campo High School student. Three people have now been charged. Police say Edith Melendez served alcohol to the minors. Lee Trevino Jr. is accused of driving while drunk. A third adult who allegedly served the minors is also facing charges. That crash happened on Lum Road in Fort Bend County on January 12th. James Russell Okanis died when Lee Trevino crashed his car into some trees. Authorities are now looking for the third adult. We are actively uh, seeking uh, Vicente Joshua Castillo, goes by Ben or uh, Joshua. He's 25 years old, Hispanic male, so we have an active warrant for him. James O'Canis was 17 years old. Now to that record driver shot in North Harris County. Investigators say they found the driver while responding to the crash around 6.30 this morning. This happened on Spring Snoobner and Spring Plaza. Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli has the latest on the investigation. Good afternoon. Authorities tell me that repo truck driver was just doing his job. He took possession of another vehicle and was driving away, then gunfire. The repo truck's back window shot out. One bullet struck the driver in his chest, and the truck crashed into this ditch. But he's in good condition. Um, he's stable but critical. Casey Allison of Coast to Coast Motor says the driver, Posey Coward Jr., repoed the car nearby and was on his way back to the dealership when someone opened fire, critically injuring Coward. Posey is a fantastic employee. He's been with us for a few years, uh, many years in the repossession business. Um, military vet, just an outstanding, outstanding person. For hours, investigators searched for evidence before hooking up and towing away the vehicles. Coward's truck has cameras on its front and back. Right now, authorities are reviewing that footage. And authorities are still searching for the shooter. The first person they want to speak with is the previous owner of the car that was repossessed. Reporting in spring, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Vincent, thank you. New at noon, Houston police need your help finding two men who held a store clerk at gunpoint. This happened on December 2nd at the raceway on South Post Oak. You can see one of the men jump over the counter while the second ran around the counter while pointing a handgun at the clerk. The clerk is then forced to the ground while the other suspect removed the money from the cash register. Anyone with information is asked to contact Crime Stoppers. Strong reactions after the Board of Regents at Texas Southern University voted to fire the university's president, Dr. Austin Lane. The hours-long overnight vote came after an investigation determined Dr. Lane failed to report evidence that a student paid for admission to the university's law school. He's also accused of trying to hide excessive entertainment expenses. Lane says that he plans to fight the allegations made against him. The impeachment of President Trump enters its last chapter. A final vote on whether to acquit or convict will be held this afternoon. And despite the history behind the moment, there's little suspense. John Lawrence reports. One day after giving the State of the Union address, President Trump officially finds out his fate. He absolutely, unequivocally, is guilty. The Republican Party has the majority of the Senate and is expected to acquit the president on both counts. The arguments of the House manager simply did not demonstrate that the president's actions rise to an impeachable offense. The stances taken toward the president were largely split along party lines. The Democrats' decision was a mistake. And it's only further divided our nation during a time when we need to be working together. I thought that the evidence was overwhelming of how he literally held up aid uh, to a foreign country, a fledgling democracy, an ally that had been invaded by Russia, all because he wanted dirt on a political opponent. Some leaders say it's time to put this political saga in the past. It's time to move on and to move on to focus on bipartisan legislation to help the families that we represent. Others hope to not see such a case again. I hope history treats this episode as an aberration 
not a precedent. Meanwhile, President Trump's approval rating is 49% according to a Gallup poll released Tuesday. That's the highest it's been since he's taken office. I'm John Lawrence reporting. President Trump delivered his third State of the Union address last night to a deeply divided Congress. The president pointing to job growth and a booming stock market as cornerstones of a strong economy, highlighting a new trade deal with China and a campaign promise delivered to renegotiate NAFTA. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer gave the Democratic response. But unlike so many who came before me, I keep my promises. We did our job. We're capable of great things when we work together. We cannot forget that despite the dishonesty and division of the last few years, and that we heard tonight from the President of the United States, together we have boundless potential. The address that started with the President and Speaker not shaking hands ended with the Speaker tearing up the speech. Coronavirus cases are on the rise worldwide with now more than 20,000. This morning, more Americans who were in the center of the outbreak in China are being brought back home to military bases in California. NBC's Molly Hunter reports from Hong Kong. The second person outside of mainland China has died from coronavirus. Hong Kong's first death, the other one in the Philippines. The other big news in Hong Kong is there's a cruise ship actually with 3,600 people on board that may be quarantined. So two weeks ago, that same cruise ship, several of those passengers have tested positive for coronavirus. Now two weeks later, 30 crew members are showing symptoms. Everyone is now getting tested. There's a possibility that all of those people may have to stay on board for the next 14 days, which is the incubation period of coronavirus in Tokyo another cruise ship 10 people have already tested positive for coronavirus including one American but the big news out of the region is another American evacuation flight the other news out of Wuhan is the first US citizen has tested positive with coronavirus but here in Hong Kong uh, the roads are quiet everyone is wearing masks there's certain uh, paranoia around everyone wearing masks and everyone talking about it in Beijing take a quick look at these streets absolutely quiet. We'll certainly keep you posted on all of the news coming out of the region as these numbers go up. Molly Hunter, NBC News, Hong Kong. We are still waiting for the official word from the Rockets, but Channel 2 Sports has confirmed a major four-team trade deal. The late night move, me, uh, the late night moves rather, mean big changes for the Rockets roster. The Rockets are trading Clint Capella, Nene, Gerald Green, and a first-round pick. In return, the team is getting Robert Covington and Jordan Bell from the Timberwolves. Covington was with the Rockets between 2013 and 2014. So here's how it all breaks down. Capella and Nene are going to the Hawks. Green, a Houston native, and our draft pick are going to the Nuggets. The NBA trade deadline is 2 p.m. tomorrow. Up next, a fire chief jumps into action to save a woman. How he managed to free her after she became pinned under her car. A chase during the parade. Why police were after this driver during the Super Bowl parade in Kansas City this morning. You're watching Channel 2, Houston's home for news. Tense moments along the Kansas City Chiefs parade route this morning. Check that out. A slow speed police chase on the parade route already lined with fans there to celebrate the Chiefs Super Bowl win. The driver of the vehicle plowed through a barricade and then down the parade route. Clay County Sheriff's deputies used stop sticks, which the vehicle hit. Police eventually used a pit maneuver to stop the car. Two people were taken into custody. Thankfully, no one was hurt. What are you thinking, dude? All right, a fire chief being called a hero this afternoon after he saved a woman's life. Yes, yeah, she was pinned under a car. This happened in Colleton County, South Carolina. Hannah Powers spoke to that fire chief about the rescue. She was just totally incapacitated out there in the pitch black dark on the side of the interstate. For 45 minutes, the woman struggled. Fire Chief Barry McCroy says it was so dark along the road, it could have been until tomorrow morning for this woman to get help. After using her foot to call 911, crews showed up on the scene quickly, and they were able to get her hands free. The whole thing, only after we arrived, only took about five minutes. The um, ambulance arrived at the same time, and um, firefighter paramedics got out and treated her for her injuries, and they gave her some pain medication, and then our agency transported her to Trident Hospital. Chief McCroy walked me through how they were able to rescue the woman so quickly. 
But she was changing the tire, so she was putting the tire back on the car mm -hmm. when it fell. So she got crushed between the tire and the fenders. I kept thinking right it was here. crushed here. And it was up here. And then um, they took the spreaders and stuck it underneath the car and just lifted it up. So when they lifted it off of her, she was able to pull her hands out. So this is really sharp, too. Mm -hmm. That was Hannah Powers reporting. NASA astronaut Christina Koch is returning to the Earth from the International Space Station, and she's making history. It was the longest single space flight by a woman. It's also the second longest single space flight by any U.S. astronaut. She arrived on the station back on March 14th. She's scheduled to return Thursday after 329 days, breaking Peggy Whitson's record of 288 consecutive days in space. Our temperatures uh, not quite in a free fall at the moment, but they've taken a nosedive. Yeah, so they really, yeah, yeah they, and fast, they just yeah. They crashed as soon as the front came through. This is, I just tweeted out a picture of both Texas and Louisiana, and I said, if this doesn't sum up winter in the Southern Plains, we've got tornado warnings on one side, we've got winter storm warnings on the other. Wow. Yeah. That's why everybody's yep. just like, buckle up when you move down yep. here. Because it's February. Never know, it's February, right. Yeah, things are getting aggressive out there. So thankfully, most of that is on the bookends of the uh, area here. So West Texas still getting hammered with snow, and we've got some uh, severe thunderstorms actually moving in towards Louisiana. Pretty quiet out there for us, but it is cold, as Christine mentioned, brisk, the way I like to say for brisk, the rest of this afternoon. Yes. Uh, very brisk if you're going to be out in it. So not the best patio day, that's for sure. A little bit of visibility problems as well. We've seen some patchy fog out there, and you can see just how low the cloud deck is, basically hanging on the west loop there. You can't even see as you work your way up the south, uh, southwest freeway. This is from right here at Channel 2. So the temperatures are all sitting generally in the 40s. We've got low 40s woof, out there from uh, Huntsville down to Conroe, 45 at Bush, 46 at Hobby. Galveston right now sitting at a 51. They were at about 70 early this morning. And as you might guess, the temperature change from that is continuing to be anywhere from around 25 to 35 degrees colder from this point yesterday. We were already racing into the mid-70s. So it is definitely winter time, at least for the next 24 hours anyway. Pretty strong, steady northwest wind, too. That's going to continue 10, 15, 18 miles an hour. Wind gusts a little higher than that. There's no wind advisory out there, but it, it will be breezy today. This is what I was just talking about. I'm going to step out of the way. So that yellow, or excuse me, the red box that you see from Jackson, Mississippi, down towards central Louisiana. That is a tornado watch box. We've got all these severe thunderstorm warnings that have been popping as these thunderstorms are starting to pop, moving in towards the Arklatex. And of course, here's all the heavy snow that's been dumping from Lubbock down to San Angelo, and that's stretching its way up towards Wichita Falls and eventually moving in towards Oklahoma. So let's talk about what we're going to expect here. Notice that the computers are thinking most of the showers are still here. They're racing out ahead of that, and that happens sometimes. These fronts get moving faster, and it just takes the models a little while to catch up. But I do think they eventually will. So I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of rain for the rest of the day today. It'll just stay murky, but it is going to stay cold too. And then we get a quick pop. Here comes a couple of quick showers early tomorrow morning. And just a slight chance you could get some of that changing over. Still looks like the best chance of anything if we get some sleet, maybe a little few dry snowflakes. I don't think it's going to be real wet because the air mass is drying out too. Could likely be in this strip, basically from, let's say, just north of Madisonville, the northern Brazos Valley, slicing from Brenham down towards Columbus. That line north and west. I think that's where if we can see anything, that's where it will be. Again, the ground is still very, very warm. We're not expecting any problems uh, with travel-wise, and most of what we'll see in terms of the wintry weather is going to stay well off to the north west of us here. But by tomorrow afternoon, should be able to break out some sunshine. Watch these temperatures, though. They don't move much. In fact, we're going to sit in the upper 40s to about 50 for much of the day. A very cold start tomorrow morning in the upper 30s, and the wind's going to make it feel even chillier than that. And then only getting up into the low 50s for Thursday afternoon. So we're going to kind of limp through the next couple of days where we'll see some very winter-like conditions. However, as we mentioned before, it is Texas, and you know what that means. Spring is just about 24 hours away. So as we get into the weekend, we'll see lots of sunshine. I think Saturday, Friday's going to be a real nice day, mid-60s. And then as we get to Saturday, Sunday, we'll keep the cloud cover around. And then a front kind of lingers starting Sunday all the way through next week. It's going to be one of those where it just kind of sits right on top of us. And so it'll be just sort of humid, warm, murky. Not the best weather as we head in towards Valentine's Day. Yeah, that's all right, though. We'll speed day, man. Yeah, it's good. As long as it gets warmer. That's we're right. Good. And yes, as long as you bring the roses, okay? It's coming <laughs> up. All right. You heard it here. <laughs> Justin, yes, thank man. you. <laughs> All right, Houston Life is coming up in about 40 minutes. Yeah, speaking of keeping it real, right? Derek and Courtney joining us live with a look at what they have coming up today on this show. Hi, guys.
Hey there, friends. You know, we're halfway through the week, and I think we're feeling a little bit punchy. We're also really excited that we have some really big stars from the big screen stopping by. Jaime Camille and Sandra Cheveria. There they are on your screen right now. Their brand new movie, My Boyfriend's Meds. It's a romantic comedy. I was just watching it this morning, and oh my gosh full of laughs. We're also going to hear a bit about their fantastic careers, Courtney. Okay, and also, I'm totally obsessed with this Netflix series, Cheer. Have you watched the, an episode I've yet? I've seen one episode. Okay, it's fantastic. If you're hooked, listen, Lauren Kelly's going to take you to the place that you need to be. One of the stars of the show actually trains there, and um, this is going to be at All Star Revolution. They have about 500 athletes that train and compete there. Tons of national titles, and Lauren Kelly is going to show us a little mat trick, I think. She's going to be great. Lauren's good at everything, she right? Is. It's going to be so much fun. Also, we're going to do a little Fillers 101 on the show. Our viewers, they love these live demonstrations. And our friends over the Institute of Anti-Aging, Dr. Richard and Dana Laconi, they're going to stop by and sort of break it all down for us. What you can expect when you get these treatments, the different types of fillers, and uh, even some special deals for our viewers they're running. We're a big fan of the We're Institute of Anti-Aging. We love them. We've heard from friends they just do wonders <laughs> with people's faces. Hey, we, we need all the help we can get, right? Listen, I'm oh, really you 80 don't years actually. Old. I was going to say amen. We all do, don't we? But <laughs> they always look no, good. You always don't look think we do because it's already been did. <laughs> oh, it's already been did, done. I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. All right, we'll see you guys at 1 o'clock on Houston Live. All right, a disturbing rise in lung cancer. That's right, where the disease is now on the rise. You can count on us. Welcome back. Topping our health news this afternoon, lung cancer is on the rise among young women. That's right, a new study spanning 40 countries shows a trend of higher lung cancer rates in young women compared with men in recent years. In the past, lung cancer has been more common among men because they were more likely to smoke earlier and often. Experts say more research is needed to determine the reasons for the rise in women. Seafood lovers, you're going to want to listen up. There's a new health alert that you need to hear. A new study links elevated mercury levels in the blood to an increased risk of skin cancer. Researchers found people with the highest mercury levels had nearly double the odds of being diagnosed with non-melanoma skin cancer than those with lowest. Most Americans are exposed to mercury by eating contaminated fish and shellfish. We all know exercising is good for you, but a new study for adults over 60 says there are several benefits for older adults. The new study out of Ireland says seniors who were physically active had a lower risk of breast and prostate cancer fractures and early death. There were also perks for their mental health. They had lower rates of dementia and depression and reported a better quality of life. Very nice. All right, getting a live look now at the Southwest Freeway. It is cold. It is dreary on this Wednesday afternoon. Justin has a look at your forecast coming up on the opposite end of the break. Today. The big chill is settling in. Yeah, it is. Check it out. <laughs> this is what I was talking about. Hey, look, snow on the west, tornadoes on the right at this point. You know, we've got tornado oh. watch box. That's what that red little parallelogram is there. So uh, that's that pretty much just describes what happens down here in the southern plains in the wintertime. But uh, we're going to be dealing with a pretty cold afternoon. I keep us in the 40s for much of the day, but look at those 70s by the weekend. Justin, thanks so much. I haven't heard parallelogram in a long time. <laughs> Appreciate that. Well, Appreciate right. you joining us. We'll see you